Um, so welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream for live people and today we're colouring in the Colin Thompson um, Fantastique and it basically is lots of his drawings that he's done for his children's books. He's an illustrator. I think he's done about 70 books uh, and he, as, when he was younger, I think he created these worlds within books and, and trees and then he made stories up for them so that's an amazing story so i'm going to start with my three riggers uh, these were bought from um, a model railway show but i'm sure we'll be able to pick them up uh, but they're a really nice you want a really nice chunky rigger and what the trick to do with it is if I can show this, what I will be doing with it is dipping it in to my water and then scraping a little bit off. And then it has to be a baby wipe. It cannot be a dry uh, kitchen paper. And on the baby wipe that's wet, I am twisting to a bit of a point. And that allows me to have all that damp wet in there and colour at the end and that enables you to have a lovely old-fashioned watercolour effect but working very damp not wet as traditional watercolour so I do this on a napkin I watercolour napkins and I can only do it because I work damp but it ensures that it doesn't matter how thin your books are how thing the paper is this is the back of a wall of a printer paper and that's another reason to do it on printer paper some have gone through because I've wet the paper a little bit too much but most of them they don't go through and they don't crinkle your paper it's flat so I'm going to move this slightly oh I think I'm there actually on that page and it's going to be a little bit tricky because I do like to work slanted normally, but we'll, we'll try to do it that way. And then I can show the colour that I'm going to use. And I'll tell you the colour I'm using as well. So the other two riggers are sat waiting for me to go to somewhere else. So I'm a bit confused about this little piece here. Um, to put my glasses on. Can everybody see me? Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, have I missed anybody out? There's if you want anything explaining again, or if I haven't explained anything very well, do write it in caps because I haven't got my glasses on, but I can probably just about squint. Uh, don't tell grannies. Um, so I think the colour's about right. I'm zoomed right in and I've got my camera um, a hand span away from my work. Um, and the light is actually on end so that's what I've done so um, I'm in fact I'm not going to do those two because they're going to be a bit difficult for me I'm going to do something else and if I do that I'm going to have to move everything bear with me two seconds could I do this one perhaps and if you read what they're all called these books are all a pun on the original on the original so um, there's Snow White and the Seven Warts um, there's Tartar the Otter um, so he's he's obviously changed the names of the the books um, I was trying to sort out about doing Inktober and my daughters and I are mesmerized because I've lost I bought my daughter my other daughter the really big sketchbook um, and again, if you're careful with ink, you can draw on it without going through. I'm tempted to put my large water pot. Oh, sorry, on there because I can then move about a little bit better. And I was going to do this page here. This, sorry, it isn't a page. This section. So I've got all my ink pens. And I seem to have lost 
or shall we say misplaced this very large book <laughs> which is ridiculous really but um, if you knew my house you would understand why <laughs> so oh hi Dimothy welcome to Bunny's Designs and um, I'm sorry if I've missed anybody out but welcome to Bunny's Designs we are dry watercolouring um, I thought I'd invented watercolouring because it's it's using watercolours, but it's colouring in a book. Um, so that's not too wet. So I've got to decide which book to do. So I think I'll have a go at that one. Um, and we don't want to, an orange. In fact, I've got two oranges in a row there. So I'll probably do a green. Uh, so I'm probably going to have a look at Juniper Green number 42. And these are the Derwent watercolour pencils. Um, do bear with me, I'm just going to fold a piece of cheap photocopy paper and just have a bit of a. I quite like that one. And that makes sure that you, you don't make a big faux pas and put a really bright, ugly colour next to a nice one. So again, I'm, I'm flipped into there. And you can't miss about, you've got lots of warm lights. You can't really fluff about because this dampness in this brush is going to dry fairly quickly. So what I found out to do is, if I put that under here, is to just make, if you can see the dampness, I have some nice colour on the end of the paintbrush. If you can see that. Um, and I've kind of made everything a bit difficult for me, but... And just, just bear with me two seconds. I'm just going to hope that this holds itself up. And we are... He's going to do that one. Oh, it's going to do that one, I think. And so the patter of tiny feet, because he's wandering around. This is a very cool, north-facing little cottage front room. Sorry. My toes are scratched to pieces. They're all rescued and they're all crackers, that's all I can say. Um, and if I start at that end there, I can tease the colour across. And I'm really sorry, but this is an old cottage and it was a two up, two down. And in the 30s, somebody put um, an outs a, 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 um, a bathroom and a kitchen on the end. But of course that meant they turned the kitchen stairs and put them at the front room. So everybody has to go through the dining room in order to get upstairs. So I do apologise. Um, but I decided when I was poorly that I would, uh, I would need a room that I could crawl into. And I've had a caravan outside for years which was wonderful but sometimes I can't get down the garden so... Um, I've tried my craft area in every denomination, <laughs> in every which way, and ended up in the dining room. Um, but the, it's a fab room, it's just everybody has to go through it, and then the kitchen door's open for the dogs. And so this way makes um it, it's only damp but it, it does give you a wonderful way of putting color over the top if that was wet you'd have to go play somewhere else and then come back if you're doing traditional watercolors because you wouldn't be able to touch this so that's another reason why i like it you can do this on the train you can do it in the car everybody go off for a walk and leave you normally leave me in the car so I want a little bit of a shadow under there and I'm going to build a little bit of a shadow under there as well because I'm, I'm beginning to think more of an artist again and think that this is this is um, obviously a bookshelf and there would be shadowy a shadow on that side um, now the grayscale is very clever because what it does already puts 
a shade on it for you. So if you took the tire and just went over the top with grey or a colour, that would automatically dull that one and leave that as a highlight, which is what a grayscale is. So in theory, a lot of work's done for it. Oops, sorry. The only thing is I would catch that every five minutes. So um, does everybody, is everybody with that? Does everybody know what I'm doing? But it is a lovely way of working and it means you could do it on your knee, in front of the TV. Um, I normally have um, a cushion tray and I take the cushion tray in the car and I have a little um, push along. Um, it's, I think it's for walking. Uh, you'll have to bear with me to, for two seconds. I'll just have to say, uh, Nigel, Nigel, yeah. uh, Alfie's gone upstairs. Sorry, somebody's left the door open. Um, sorry about that. It's a puppy alert. Um, we rescued the King Charles, who looks adorable, uh, but he has a nasty habit of going upstairs and uh, doing what you should do. Um, doing what you should do outside, he does it inside. So we have a floor that we can pour neat bleach on. <laughs> but not upstairs. So he's banned from upstairs unless he has an adult with him. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Let me put my glasses on. Um, oh, hi, Dee Dee. Hi, hi, Dee Dee. Hi, Rebecca, Janet, Timothy, Linda. Uh, welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, I'm working quite dry in a little area and I'm using Juniper Green number 42 of the Derwent watercolour pencils but I'm using them out of my little book because I have a lot more control so I'm using a damp uh, rigger number 3 drying it off to a point um, on a, a wet baby wipe and then activating the colour so I've got some nice colour on the end but all that is damp and that's allowing it does look like it's bobbled but it isn't it's damp but it's not wet so I can go back in there and give a little bit of a in fact I should be using a thinner brush really now I've got three um, riggers a three zero a number one and a number three and I found they're the best so if you have a larger area, you can still work quite dry. And then you know you're not going to buckle your little book because um, three of the books I've decided I don't want. I want, to, I want them to be nice and I don't want to tear pages out. And so there's the Colin Thompson book, but these pages are really nice and thick. Um, the Imagimorphery and the Animorpha. They're the others I don't want to take out, and a couple of Harry Potters. All the others I have, I kind of destroy instantly. So, um, but I so this is only just a little bit damp, um, and that's going to give me a really nice low light, a shadow, which would naturally occur just under the. Um, that would naturally occur just under the, under the label. So I've decided I'm going to do all the books and I'm going to leave all the fiddly little things and add on things um, for a different time because I am working. I cannot straighten my paintbrush upright. That's how close the camera is. Um, but when I'm on my knee, I bought my little pound shop. I love my little pound shop. Um, it is. Um, I don't know what how I forgot it. And I couldn't believe I found it in there. But they had the springy ones, and I couldn't find it. I should have. No, I don't have a tape measure anywhere. But it's um, just a bit longer than my. Um, oh well, if that's eight inches, that's about. It's about it's about four inches and then you can extend it to probably about six inches um, and I used that on my knee a few weeks ago when I was really poorly and I couldn't sit at the desk and that works very well for I used it when I did this um, the Imagine Morphe 
which has completely disappeared. I can never remember which one it is. It? Murphy's Law says it's the wrong one. Bear with me two seconds. And I was a bit of a, a wimp, so I hope I don't make you dizzy. But it's, that's the one I did, so it made, it helped me um, show in fine detail the Imagimorphia. And what I did is I, I did, I was a bit of a chicken. I chose this one, which was the last in the page, but that's all flat. But I chose this one because I picked out the leaves and then I picked out the flowers. And that kind of gave me some kind of, uh, I think I left the, pay, the pearls um, and the little creatures and snail under here. And again, working dry, you can um, go washes over the top, but I, could, I wouldn't call it a wash because it's very dry. Um, but it allows you to, to make things look like a traditional watercolour but not using all the water that you need. Um, and so that gave me the idea to drop the camera. Um, it's actually fixed on, a, on a, an extended lamp. Uh, and so I, I'm, I cannot get the, so if I tap the uh, camera, do forgive me, but uh, it's nice to see the, oh, I hope it's nice to see. I just have to put my glasses on. So I hope that's that's okay for you. To, um, oh, hi, Vaughn. Um, hi, everybody. So this is a live recording for YouTube and Ustream, and I'm picking off each book and doing them individually. I hope I've got the colour right, and I hope it's in it's in. Um, I hope because I've taken the automatic focus off because it it jumps and drives me insane. Um, so if you bear with me two seconds, if I can find my little mouth. Can everybody see that? Is that in focus? Just let me double check. Oh, sorry. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> we're having a heat wave here. Right, so just bear with me two seconds. I think that is the best we're going to do. So do tell me if that looks okay please and that will allow me to um oh hi vicky yes um hi anita everybody else welcome to bunny's designs i've decided to i had a bit of a practice and it did take me a couple of days but i was playing about with the colors because i wanted a bit a bit muted colors on this one probably some other pages i may go back um and it also gave me an opportunity to make a mistake because this is a photocopy and I could leave the book at home and just take the photocopy and I actually folded it up and popped it into my handbag so as I say some of them I didn't like I didn't like the purples I didn't like the pinks um, but I, I found some nice and I, I just went off the bright colours and so I really love photocopying something first and having a bit of a play um, because if this particular book um, which is the Colin Thompson Fantastique I want it to be um, for best I want it to be um, something nice to colour I don't want it to be uh, something that I'm going to cut up and I've got hundreds of others like that but this one the Harry Potters and the Imagimorphery I would like them to stay nice and for my birthday my husband bought me Pride and Prejudice, classic colouring. Um, so I might do a flip at the end if anybody wants to see that one. Um, so I'll crack on with this because I, I do tend to do an awful lot of waffling. So um, And I have to take my glasses off for that. So I've built up quite a nice little bit of a... A round, people know that is a rounded book. It's not a flat, a flat-edged book. Um, so, and because I'm working in such a, such a tight space, I've got to be a little bit careful. Um, so I hope I've said hi to everybody. Um, I'm trying to miss. I'm going to miss the. I th I think that's an old-fashioned jack uh, to hold the tire up. 
Um, but then there is a candlestick on it, one of the other ones, and it's and that's a spanner. So I haven't decided whether to do those proper silver greys or whether to do them just grayscale. So I'm going to leave those. I'm just concentrating on the books um, to kind of give them a little bit of definition. So I'm still using Juniper Green number 42 of the Derwent Ink Tent pencils, but I'm using them from my paper palettes. I'm not using the pencil themselves. And I'm trying to build up a little bit of shadow under here. And the way of working quite dry lends itself to some really nice shading. Um, and although you can get that if you drop watercolour into water, traditional watercolour painting, um, your book wouldn't stand up to that. I don't think there's, apart from the professional um, watercolour books that have been brought out um, for colouring, but um, you've still got your other pages to protect, and it's a lot of faff. I, I can do this anyway. I can do this in bed. I can do it in the front of the TV. Um, I was doing it um, sat in the train going to London the other day. Uh, people think you're crackers, but hey ho. So it's, and the most you're going to spill is about a tablespoon of water. And again, I do this in the car, and hubby can't shout because a tablespoon of water is not going to do any damage. But you can build up some really nice um, shades and um, layers of colour without using a lot of water. And once that you've touched that, that's almost dry. So I can go in again. I was going to show you that. I'll pop that upside down. So you can actually see the amount I'm using so I'm going to have to start again because you've got to be fairly quick because it's quite warm um, under all these lamps so I'm just activating the colour I have a damp brush that I've twisted to a point from a baby wipe and again activate the colour um, and, and as I say, you just keep dipping as many times as you like. Maybe that brush is, is oops, I've got about an inch and a half, <laughs> I have to get my hand underneath. Um, but I quite like working like that. I think I'm going to stick to my number one rigger. And the way this works, it, it, the way this is allowed to work, is because the riggers were used by the, the ma old masters. And what they did, this is going to be a bit quicker look. Uh, what they did is, with the, um, when they did the, the tall ships with all the riggers and the, sorry, all the ropes and the, and the sails, they wanted a continuous line. They obviously needed something that would hold a lot of paint. And they could draw a continuous line and this is why this works this is the only way this works there's a lot of damp water there it's not saturated because it would puddle out it's damp and there's a tiny bit of color at the end so that allows me to manipulate the color out like traditional water coloring but with hardly any water i used to do this with a, a smaller brush but it, it, it's it doesn't work it's not as easy it's taken me at least six months to come up with this and it works quite well. So I'm quite pleased with that little that little um, book. Probably a little bit more of a, a tiny bit more at the top here. Just to give that real dark shadow here. And then with the rigger sorry with the fine rig of the number 10 the zero really get a nice amount on there that's going to be the true color of the pencil and i can build up quite a nice shadow under that label and it's a little bit faffy but i kind of like working this way this is my pace uh, it's it's thinking about it and I use this for pain relief 
And if I'm concentrating on colouring in, instead of just kind of going, then I, I, I'm using the synapses of that to say you're in pain, but they're not thinking because I'm more concentrating on what I'm doing. And actually it works. It doesn't always work, but most of the time it works. And anything that stops me taking nasty painkillers, I'm all for. So that's really the reason I do it. Um, so, sorry about the waffle. I'm in a waffle mood. Um, I'm not sure if my chat is working. I put my glasses on. So, hi, welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, this is a bit of a slow pro process, but these colour books that are coming out now are, are lending themselves to be really, really detailed and decorative. Um, and if, as I say, if you are concentrating on something, then you need something that um, it can do that for. Otherwise, it would be children's ones. So, so there's uh, there's one down there. So I'm going to change the colour. So I've got a green on that page, and I do have a bit of a look up here. So I'm not um, kind of putting them all in the same colour. So I might do a red one. Um, so. We have a uh, Mad Carmine, which is a number 19, and I have my little trusted photocopy paper. I think that's a little bit bright, that one. But I might do that one behind there. With that. So, again, because I've practiced now, I don't have any control over what's in my brush. So, I'm going to do that again, and I'm just touching the little piece of it. Now, it is a little bit damp that. And I'm still in frame and I can manipulate a lovely deep edge on that book and because now it's got paler I can just gently go over the top and that's given me a lovely pale edge on there and then a tiny bit more because I think this is going to be really deep but I'm not going to mess that up because it is a very tiny corner that. Oh, sorry. We have old dogs that cough. So I'm going to use my number number one rigger again and go in there with the same colour and just kind of dot very carefully. Because as I say, this this is it's not fine art, but this is about how you would work. On a piece that you wanted to be, to be nice, is you know you just um, and I I was trained as a graphic designer, and we had to do all our work for ready for printing by hand. So you would be a, a week possibly on a word. <laughs> if you messed it up on the last day, gosh, were you cross? Um, and so that's ruined me as an artist really because um, when I did my degree I couldn't do these lovely skippy kind of wispy lines when I do a line drawing I put a line down and that's for, for keeps um, but I just cannot I don't have the patience and I'm in too much pain to to, to draw or paint things. I'm going to try and do Inktober. Um, but I, the, other re the reason I designed this way is I am stroking the page with this very large, flexible, bendy. So there is absolutely no pressure on my hand at all because it is bendy. And that's the other reason that it works for me and I can do this for hours. And again, that's what I love about it. I love it because if you if you really wanted to, you could change colour with this and you could you could build the colour up. I have a bit of a line on there, but possibly on the book you would have as well. So I may decide to get rid of that, but and because I'm not using a lot of water, again I can I can keep playing in the same area without thinking about that getting damp. There's nothing there at all. Um, so I hope this isn't as boring as 
watching paint dry. That was a little bit wet at that, but you can build some really nice shading on there. So if you have any questions, pop them in caps. Um, I'm just going to, so I'm going to pick that one. So I've got a red and um, let me think what other colour would I like. Probably, um, I'll just have a look at my red and it's a bit bright. I've got um, a gold here. Let's see just how gold it is though. Mm, it's quite bright, is that one? Am I able to dull it down? Probably not. No. Let me have a look at that. I'm going to swap to the number three rigger because I need a nice amount of colour. Um, lemon cadmium is number two, is quite pale. Um, again, just yes, I might go for that because I can always dull it down a little bit. I think just conscious this might be a little bit too wet, but we'll just have a bit of a play. Um, and the grayscale, because it's already cross hatched and hatched across with with um, with lines, just by going over it in one simple sweep, oops, sorry, gives you a natural. It does give itself a natural line anyway. Now that's a little bit damper than I like to work, but it's still quite damp. I wouldn't say that was wet. And this is quite therapeutic. There's no there's no rush with this. This is this is picking every book by itself and just giving it the attention that you want. Sorry, there's three dogs, they all sneeze and they all grump and they all they're all rescued, but if we shut the door, they'll scratch to come in. And then if I, if I put them in the other room, they scratch the door, and it just ends up rather silly. <laughs> so in theory, there would be a shadow under the pipe, and of course, there's a lot of cross hatching under there. So you could just might maybe make that that little bit lemony colour. Hope that's coming across. Can everybody see that? Okay, or is it kind of too too zoomed in? Maybe. Has anybody got any questions? Anybody? Um, I did stream a little bit yesterday because uh, I wanted to show my wonderful card. My daughter, because I'm I'm crackers about um, Star Trek, and I'm as old as Star Trek, and I'm as old as Bond as well. So my daughter morphed me onto a Bond character with Roger Moore's arms around me. Of course, that was beautiful. And then she, on the next page, I was morphed to be on the bridge with Captain Kirk's, the original. So that was also fab. And then on the back page, I was uh, myself with my husband at my daughter's wedding at, um, last year. So, and she left me the most beautiful, beautiful uh, message, bless her. So I wanted to show that, but... Uh, this is a little bit bright, but it's not doing so bad. And I'm using that cadmium yellow number two. Oops. Um, there is something very, very calming about this as well. It's not a, it's it's not a rush. It's not a race. It's as I say, you you you're picking each individual book or part of of the design. Um, and this way would be quite good because there's a lot of control here, a lot of control. And so um, if you were doing a mandala and you wanted a particular highlight on a particular size, uh, shape every single time, then you could do that with this method. And, and I quite like that, I have to say. I think it's the way I was taught to draw. We were taught that our first lesson 
they gave us an ink pot and told us to go out into the centre of Leeds. And we said, OK, we've got our sketchbook and we've got an ink, pe an ink pot of ink. Uh, what are we going to use to draw with? And we were taken to a hedge and we said, right, you want three sticks, you want a fat stick, you want a thin stick and you want one in the middle. And we, in those days, there were a lot of, um, we used to call them tramps, I think you call them vagrants now, um, a lot in Leeds, bless them, and they were homeless people. And um, a lot were drinking in those days. People just let people just sit about drinking. And um, we drew them in their long trench coats. We went round town and shoppers as well. We drew shoppers and children in buggies and things. And we drew with three sticks. And I taught my children to draw and they're far better than I am. And I told them it's 90% looking and 10% drawing. And I said it even could be 95% looking. You look at your subject before you draw it. Now, I'm an old fuddy-duddy. <laughs> I seem to have got quite a nice natural highlight on that book. And again, that's dry. You would say that was damp. Second time I've done it, it's dry dry as a bone and flat so is everybody okay with that can you oh thank you uh, thank you Dee Dee thank you it, it has given quite a, just a natural uh, highlight um, in, inside the book hasn't it um, I hope it's I hope it's um, in 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 the word what's the word what's the word in focus <laughs> i hope he's um in focus because if you use automatic it, it, it jumps up and down like an idiot and it makes you a bit sick so so i've put oh i'm going to do a little you see the other thing you could do is is pick out a, a slightly darker yellow um, but I'm trying to do muted colours but I'll just do this um, and then just give that this is the fine rigour just the tiniest amount because if it's not enough you can always go over it again um, for goodness sake don't use black now let's just give them that a little bit and down here obviously I could possibly just bring out the real deep proper colour of the lemon cadmium and really just go in there because with everything going on down there that would be a little bit darker Um, so now I'm on to the next one, which is um, Anthony and Carburetta. So what he's done there is he's made everything to do with, and the last Volvo in Paris, um, the lady that time forgot, the larder that time forgot, sorry, uh, Renault and Juliet. So obviously that's why the van's there, the car's there, the car jack, the tyre, the oil can. Um, it's quite a clever little play on words there. My daughter would love that. She loves puns. Um, so what else do we need? Um, so I've got a red and a green and a yellow. And I, I always try to look at the other colours that I've got just above there. Um, the brown ones I was trying to keep because that one's obviously a door. Um, oh, do excuse my stomach, it's not. I like that green. I haven't. I found that green. That's a nice one there. Um, so if I scroll down to there, um, I might do. Mind you, that's three greens. You know. Oh, I'm going to do that nice deep chrome. I think is it deep chrome? Oh, middle chrome. Middle chrome. So we want the large brush. Twisting it to a point on the wet baby wipe, and then um, I've got my practice there, and then I can turn that over. 
obviously I wouldn't faff about with this when I do it like this but, and that's the that's the deep chrome but I think I like that one and again because I've done this scale here this great uh, color scale I know basically what I need and what I can get out of this square of color and that gives you a lot of um, so that makes my 500 colors in my book to 5,000 if I have 10 different shades so that, that's pretty darn good that so and a quick test and it's not too bad but I have been doing this a good few weeks now and um, but I, I even I make mistakes. I still make mistakes. I sometimes look and I think, oh, what did I do that colour there for? Um, but that's that's worked out a quite nice, quite a nice um, scale up to there. So I'm probably going to go with the smaller brush now because I want to keep in quite good control of that. So back to my middle chrome, which is number eight. And play under here, because if I start where the darkest is, because that's where the most is on the color. And that's gone very dark, very dark, but it can stand it because of course it's next to a yellow one, which I shouldn't have done really, but and if you tease the colour out, you have a natural kind of... Sorry, that's the puppy underneath the table. Um, and deep middle chrome number eight. Whoops. And again, I'm just going to give that a bit of a colour because I'm not sure what that is. But I do need a bit of colour under here along that edge because that's tucked back into the bookcase um, I'm struggling for space here so uh, I'm going to do that with the finest one so that's given me a bit of a, a bit of a line across so if I can work that out it's going to be quite nice and I've got oh sorry dog lark dog alert sorry I keep having to stop these puppy alerts um, and then at the top again I think that will stand quite a nice um, sorry my little puppy bless him he barks for no reason at all so that's beginning to so I'm halfway there it's taken me a little while but I am halfway there is everybody is everybody okay with that? Oh, hi Judy, thank you. Um, it looks so on this. Oh, is that natural? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I do try. <laughs> I do try. It's a different way of working, but it suits me. And I, I designed it for people who, who, who can't colour with uh, pens and pencils for hours and then I mean I used to do that but um, I love this way it's so easy and it's you can work at your own pace and just uh, I just kind of like it to, so let me have a look for another color now so if you if you have any um, questions pop them in caps so I'll probably do this full little little shelf and then I'll stop the recording and do another one but th the only thing with these are they're a bit of a much of a muchness they're all the same so I'm just going to have a look at number 28 but I think this might be a little bit bright oh no it might be okay I haven't done a purple because I didn't like the purples in the other one um, but I, I think oh what about the line um, blue violet lake number 27 that looks quite muted I am trying to keep them a muted colour. Yes, I like that one. Um, so again, I have to start again because the brush is completely immersed in water, twisted to a twisted to a point, so it's damp but it's not wet. And then that's on that side. Blue Violet Lake is number twenty-seven. 
that's a hover moon frame and I've got some nice colour on there just a little quick test and then just stroke the colour in and that's the least pressure then on your hands and again a little drop more on there balloon frame and you can build some nice colour under there because obviously that's going to be that's going to be in shadow and then of course that's going to be in shadow as well so try to twist the point because this is quite a this is a large brush is this one um, but I think that's going to be a little bit darker under there because this book is tucked away under the other one so but it's nice that you can build up colour because I can't build colour with pencils. I've had to give them to my daughter. And she loves them. She can bring out some gorgeous um, blending. But this is blending with water, I think. Best way to describe it. And then, of course, some on there. You do kind of get into your own little world, I have to say. I imagine somebody knocking on that door and bobbing in there. And it's, uh, and I haven't even thought about Harry Potter, how I'm going to be. Um, because I'm sure you remember things from the film and the book. So that's got that nice little bit of light on there, but a nice, possibly a little bit more there, and then that nice down there. So. I'm not going to touch that anymore. I'm going to leave that and go on to the next one. So as I say, I've done, I've done five. Whoops, am I in? Am I still in frame there? I, I did like the little. Going back to the pretend one, I did like the little van tucked away. But what I realised is that book is the cover of this book, and so what happens is on the inside it's wood but on the outside it's actually the cover of the book so that should be that colour and again if I'd have done that in the book I'd have been cross with myself for doing that but that's that's let me do that and I've I managed to, to save that so um, I think I like the colour of the van as well but I'm not quite sure but I do like that green so if I look through my greens there's quite a lot of greens on this page um, there's a bottle green but I'm going to save that for that bottle um, and I've done a juniper one so mineral green let's just have a quick look at mineral green and the mm, which if I like that one there's a may a may green that's very light oh I use that for the the greenery so I'm, I may not use that again I like that for the greenery so I need to wash the brush out because I need to get rid of the colour um, but this is the water this is the colour of the water that I'm just washing the brush out in so again as a tight Yorkshire lass I am definitely not wasting a lot of pigment and these pencils are very pigmented they are fab um, what I could do is go to the um, Neo Colour Tools. Let's have a look. Um, I didn't label these, but um, the Neo Colour Tools, they're just the, the crayons scribbled. Now, this is a nice blue, uh, a bluey green here, dark green. Uh, I don't didn't label them, and I've pulled. I wonder if that's a little bit too bright. Can, perhaps. I did use it on here, so let me see if I can find it. Mm, didn't like it because I thought it was too bright. I think that's it. So because I've put that there, I've realised I didn't like it. Um, but I'll try this blue. Again, that's too bright. <coughs> oh dear, sorry. Dog alert. Oh dear, dear, dear. I don't know what he's eaten. Um, I don't think I'm going to be happy with any of those. Let me have a look at this one. This is like a midnight blue. 
if I could make it pale enough, that would be quite nice. Yeah, we'll go for that one, I think. But I do like the um, the pencils, I have to say. I've changed my mind again because I've just found this one. This is like a pale bluey teal. Have a look. Oh yes, I think I quite like that one. So I'm going for that one. That's the other beauty of this book is I can, and I don't have to get the whole box of Caran d'Ache near colour twos out. Because if I had the 72 pencils box and I had it, I wouldn't think about going and getting something else out. So I love my little book for that reason. Yes, I think that's going to work okay. I don't want it too wet because that will defeat the object. And I think a blue would go quite nicely there. So I'm going to do this one. Am I in frame? Have I slipped out of frame? Oops, sorry. Oh dear. Do it again. That seemed to stop it. Um, so let's have a look. Oh, that's a little bit wetter than I normally like, but. It's Caran d'Ache, so you just you haven't got near colour twos. They're very vibrant of those, really vibrant, so um, I'm probably... I've used them for a lot of time, a lot of years, but... I do like the colour, but I, I'm not happy with the... Can get you see that's gone that little bit too dark, but never mind. I can do I can work over it or I can it's quite a nice blue next to the others. It's not it's not too much of a mistake, but it is a little bit bright when all the others are rather muted, but never mind. It's my own fault for changing. Um, and there is 72 colours in the, uh, the pencils and I do have the full set so I don't think I should get bored with 72 pencils. I think the I've left the ink intense ones. I normally ink ten sorry I normally mix them all up but this particular page I'm not doing that. This particular page I'm sticking with the water the uh, Derwent watercolour pencils. Um, I think they're just giving enough colour um, to kind of give some continuity with all the different pages. But one thing I will do is just give that that little bit of a shadow with the little bit more colour. If anybody's got anything that they want to know, just put them in capitals and then I can uh, Oh hi Vaughn. Hi oh Vi via Vaughn. How welcome to Bunny's Designs. I can keep putting the glasses on. And then when I look down I can't see things, so See, I could create a shadow with the, I don't actually know what that is. I thought, again, you see, you've got to have a bit of a, you have got to have a bit of a play and a bit of a look at these because there's an awful lot going on, which is why I decided. Um, see, I would normally put a shadow around the door, but I'm not sure it would need one. Um, there's all sorts going on, so that's why I decided just to do the books, just to get, something going with the books. Oh sorry I keep knocking the camera. I hope I'm not making everybody dizzy. Um, uh, I guess this is as boring as watching paint dry. I do apologise. Um, but it's it's a peaceful way of working. I have to say it's, it's um, and because the sound stroking this extremely long rigour onto the page I mean it's not it's not at all it's 
hardly anything there. So, and I thought that was the wettest one I've done. So. It's it's working quite well. And then it would be nice to go back and pick off the other things as well. I think I've missed that tr that book there, but yes, I have. I've missed that book. I keep trying to squint at chat, but I can't see it unless it's in capitals. So if anybody anybody has wants to ask me anything, please pop it in caps. And I think the doors as well. I think I've left the doors. I did that one as a as I said, I wanted to finish one, but. No, I do like that green. That's quite a nice colour. But they seem to be quite dark, so I'm going to stick with those. Can everybody see the colours all right in the focus? Um, that's got to be brown, so I'm, I could do that now. So I want to find... I'm going to... Oh, my dear, I used to use the... the I could... Um, use the this four different browns in the Karen Dash there and there's my little scrappy piece of paper and that's quite a nice one mm, it's ODD sorry I literally have a couple of and that's a oh sorry that out of focus so that's a darker brown and that's possibly a, a raw sienna and then that's a a, um, a raw umber and that's a raw sienna that's a bit warmer um i think that might be cold because I, do i like that brown or do i have to go into what have i got here it's got some beautiful colors um there's burnt umber i'm gonna use a smaller brush for this one i think i'll use the burnt umber because i think i've used that one before Yes, I like that one. So again, because I know how much dampness I've got on there, I can pick off. Um, now, do I do this first? I think. Let me look at. That's another good idea for doing another one. You see, I tried to get a little bit of a highlight on there, and I like that. So I think I will use this one for the hint. I've got the wrong brush, I should have got the fine makeup, but just be a bit careful. I can just get away with it. Again, I like to be... So that's the difference between... Whoops. Oh, sorry. The first stroke and the second. So much difference. The colour is so different. Um, but possibly it would because it's up there. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to use this here. So that's the first one, and then that would be in shadow a little bit. Can't get the paint but under there. And then stroke down to that one, and then this one. And there's still quite a lot of damp in there. That's giving me that lovely, lovely light. So that looks naturally as if it's... And you can only do it once, you have to start again. So, do I want any more dark in there? No. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend until it gets the colour that I want. And then I can. Um, and then this one would be pale. And this one would be paler still. And there's still enough colour in there just to manipulate it. Now the ink tense doesn't move when it's dry. But these do. So if I've made a real boo-boo, I can, I can get out of it if I want. And then that would naturally get pale and that's given me just enough to do these at the top. I don't know if you can see that. So I've kind of got a little bit of shadow and a little bit of... Can everybody see that?
Oh, hi, Eileen. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. That was good. I've just put my glasses on. <laughs> Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm just worried that I'm not in frame. Uh, I'm not in focus because this looks a little bit blurred, but I think it's the best I can do for the colour. Um, So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, I'm still struggling with this little van. I'm not sure what colour to do it, but um, I'll pick this next one here and then I can kind of pop that one in there. Um, what have we got? We've got uh, probably another green might do. There is a maroon one that looks quite nice. Um, there's a chocolate colour. That's a good one, but I'm going to keep those for that. Um, let me have a look. There's a sandy colour. What's that one like? Let me have a look. These are a bit small, so I'm not going to use the big rig. I'm going to use the number one because I mean I think that, that might that might look okay. I'm nearly used to the colours, but I sometimes still get confused. It doesn't take much for me to get confused. Um, as you say, my children can't understand how I've lost this huge, um, the really big sketchbook I bought two one for my daughter and one for me and I don't know what's happened to mine it's disappeared but where on earth I've put it I haven't a clue <laughs> and I'm loath to buy another one because they're 25 pounds and um, but what on earth I've done with it I cannot imagine because all my books I was going to do a room tour actually but it's it's very messy is my room because I can't put things away, I can't pick things up and it's um it's not finished. I, I normally do this. I, I half get things how I like them and then by the time I've finished I never get to how they would really like to be. So, so I'm just gonna put a little tiny highlight or a low light actually on there which will make that other one stick up but I don't want a nasty line so I've kind of gone over that a little bit and I think if I take the little thinnest rigger here I'm pretty sure that this is the bottom of the book that tiny little bit there so that kind of would tie it all back in um, probably if I wasn't if I wasn't doing all these lights I don't think I don't think that it would dry as quickly. I'm sure it wouldn't do. That is something, Heather. Lol. Sorry, um, Dee Dee. What do you What do you mean? That is something. <laughs> Have I missed something? Have I missed something? I'm a bit slow today. So I'm a bit slow most days, but I'm a bit slow today. Um, I've um, I forgot what I was doing now. I just have to rearrange the uh, kneecaps. <laughs> um, where's the puppy? Oh, the puppy is asleep under. Oh, bless him! He is he is asleep under the desk. I have an old office desk with three drawers under the side. So, um, so I've got that. So this this is why you've got to think of it. So that's actually a book cover. So that's going to look like that. Or one of these and um, so I'm going to decide what to do but I think they're a pair so if they're a pair they'd be the same color that's how I look at it anyway um so let's have a look at our colors we haven't got a deep or oh, dark green could look quite nice probably so I'm not don't really want the large rigger because I've only got a small area and in fact, I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to do that one because what I normally do is I would turn that so my hand has a natural curve. And I'm actually working at a funny angle. So what I would do when I do that one, if I'm not going to make it too sick, 
it's I, and I miss these two as well, is I will work this way. So I'll probably, I could do that, I could work upside down. Um, so we need a colour for that one. Oh, that blue. That was the that was the thingy blue, wasn't it? Yes, we have a blue over there. Um there's a let me have a look. Some, and there's some beautiful blues. Has anybody got the Derwent pencils? They're fab. Um, they are fantastic. I'm going to Derwent next month. We do model shows everywhere and there's a treat. Hubby takes me there. And so I'm going to have a word with them about Derwent bringing out one of these books so people can put and properly print it out nice and neat, not scribbled like mine. So I'm going to have a word with them because um, I want to give them this design because it's, it's, their, it's made up mainly of their pencils so they should really have it. And um, these, fa these pencils are amazing. What colour did I say I wanted? I wanted a a blue there. Did I want a blue? Um, yes, but that paintbrush won't be any good. I'm going to go for this one. Oops, sorry, I keep muttering on that picture. So I think I'm going to go with this is Prussian blue number 35. So let's have a quick, have a quick look at this one. It's a little bit bright that one. Oh, what's this? Cobalt blue. It's cobalt blue. Whoops. Oh, sorry. Cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. Oh, that's quite nice. That's going to go quite well with us. Oh, it's, I forgot I've got a blue there, but it's different. Right, so my water now has almost disappeared. So I'm going to have to refill that. And... Autumn waves now. So again, dropping it into the thingy, twisting it so it's still kind of damp, but there's hardly any, there's hardly any water on my fingers at all there. Sorry, can you see? Um, it's damp. It was not particularly wet, and that will give me a lovely. You see, there is a little bit of dampness there. That's wetter than normal, have to say, but this is a big area, so just a quick and to put my finger on what I'm doing I'll be able to see so if I'm very quick to go up I can come back down and I'm not going to have a start line um, I quite like that and again that's And uh, I'm a bit the wrong way around, but never mind. And try to tease out the colour. Now I don't think you could tease it too much if it was an ink tense. Uh, but the Neoco twos you can move about, and you can move these once they're dry. Um, and that's a little bit damp, but just feels damp so straight away I can go back into there I keep knocking this sorry and just make that a bit darker because this is a darker page now that's probably too wet it's a lot wetter than I normally work it's a little bit difficult for me to be Kind of half upside down. But I've managed to just keep that one there, so that's it's quite nice. And I can build up a little bit of colour from the bottom. And then just have a natural highlight in the middle and a low light at either side. So we can see the true colour of the book. So I was thinking about doing um, a tour of my little room, but 
I've been collecting drunk junk for 40 odd years so there's quite a lot out there so that's got a little bit of color so it's not too far away it's not too bad I'm going to do this one and I'm going to go straight across because it doesn't have I mean that's not very wet at all I'm going to have that um I don't know what color puppy I like that maroon color let's go and get that one I'll finish this one and then I'll I'll do the bottom one that I missed off and then I shall uh, stop the recording and do another one. But as I say, I hope you don't think this is boring as... And I can't work out what that is. I think it's a book, but I'm not sure. So until I find out what it is, I've left it. Um, because I'm sure it'll twig to me what it is, but at the moment I just can't think. So what am I going to have next to that blue one? I could have... A sandy coloured one, or I could have the purple one, that would look quite nice. I might go for pale purple. This is, oh no, I have I don't know what this one is called, but it's the number 24. It's the number 24, and I've, for some reason I've scribbled over the thing, so let me just have a look at that. That's quite nice. Um, that should be quite nice and I'll make sure that, that can go straight up there I think it's feeding time at the zoo so you'll have to forgive the splutterings that go on in the kitchen next door and um, oh that's the naughty boy sorry Berkelark Bark Alert sorry he's deaf as a post is the uh, Heinz 57. Completely deaf as a post. So he just barks. <laughs> so if I turn that round the other way carefully. Oops. Oh, dropped the paintbrush. That was not a good idea. So let's have a look at that. So that's that's that one. And let's just nope. That is the paintbrush. No, that's not the paintbrush. Ah, oh, found it. In the olden days, I always used to put paintbrushes in my mouth, but I've stopped doing that now. Um, so I've still got the dolls to do, and I just can't work, work out what that is. Um, even with my glasses on. Oh, hi, little P. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, I'm not sure how long I've been going now, but we've, I've, uh, I quite like that blue one. That's actually made it quite, quite brighter. But I've left the labels because I haven't decided what to do with them. And I've left the odd things in between. I'm just doing the books. Um, that was my first page and I quite like that one. And then that was what we've done today. So I'm just going to do this one and then swizzle it round and do that. And then I'll stop, uh. Oh, hi, Grammy. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Vicky S. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, I'll just finish this page. So we've, I've done three pages. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. There's 20 and I've done three. But this kind of, um, this book by Colin Thompson is this particular page. I think there's six pages. Um, if I, if you just bear with me two seconds, I shall just lift the lamp up very carefully. And that's where I've got my little book. Um, and if I pull that across, no, I still haven't got, let me just think, maybe I have to pan out. If I just, oh, I can't pan out. Pan out, just bear with me two seconds. If so you can see my peg, <laughs> I'll move that. Just bear with, I think that's the last one. Yeah, just let me move the peg. I have a peg holding my camera. Onto my desk. Whoops. 
and it's decided that it wants to be a bit slow. So if I just go into here for two seconds, and then um, I use sooty. Oh, you're in frame. So that's what I've done so far. If I get rid of this now, bear with me two seconds. Which on earth have I done earlier? I just, I just um. Oh, what did I do? Ah, that's better. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. So what I'm working through is this is my little book. And so the pages I'm using at the moment are number one. And there's some lovely lemons, some nice oranges, pinky purpley movies. Um, that's a lovely one for all the little hands and faces that you can see. It's called Flesh Pink. It's number 16. Uh, gorgeous blues, a few purples, lots of greens and then some browns, some deep greens, deeper browns, um, chestnut warm browns and some cool grey. And I'm using those 72 colours. Um, these are lovely nice, these are nice greys. And I'm using them on my, from the paper palette, not from the pencil. Um, because if you can see there, there is a scale of colour on each one. So I can get about 10 colours from each palette and I find this a lot easier way of working and it's dry. So um, that was my pretend play um, and it took me a couple of days but this is a, a quiet relaxing way of working. Um, but there's some other pages in this book that won't take as long. I think the six, the six overall I think I've decided to do a DD on this. I think this has got to be a dark background with some some um, these pale moonlit warm coloured towers. Um, that's another one that's probably a little bit what I call fiddly. Oh, thanks, DD. <laughs> move, move. How does everybody else say move? Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm just going to do a quick flick. That probably would be, again, the same. Um, there's a little boy there building building his... Uh, this is the Colin Thompson colouring book. I put my glasses on now so I can see everything. <laughs> and um, I was going to use my little pound shop by... I can't find a ruler. I have a ruler here so I can take... I can't find anything, but if I get a credit card, that's a credit card. So it's, and then you can extend it a bit more. But when I was ill, um, I found that really good, especially from the pound shop. I mean, that was awesome. Um, and sometimes you have to put a bit of blue tack on the bottom, but um, that's brilliant if, if I'm ill and I. I, but that's probably the height I'm actually working at. So I'm trying to fit my paintbrush underneath this. <laughs> um, but I love this this book. Um, again, you see, that's okay, some of it. But then if you look at this fine pattern detail, and I realise they're butterflies almost. Whoops, can't do it that way, sorry. I've got six lights here. So there's butterflies and moths. Um, this one I, I think I'm, I could do this all different because they're water lilies um, and then you have balloons, hot air balloons and cakes and every little individual picture is different so that could be quite an interesting one but again I will photocopy that one I will photocopy both pages and I will play with the colour 
before I do, before I attempt that. Um, this one I probably won't because it's a mishmash and I can just colour and kick the books out. I think this is bone because that's a skeleton. So again, I thought this was going to be quite eerie. I haven't decided what to do. These pages are so thick, you are convinced there's two. Um, again, towers and houses. There's some flowers, little houses. So these will be greys and browns. Um, but I probably will mix some of these. This is a strange one. I can't work out why there's little teeth on the edge of everyone, like a zip. I haven't worked that out yet. But, um, so, the different pages, I think, lend themselves to different colours. That's how I'm going to do it. But I will probably still work out with my little book. Um, again, these are different different sections. Now I've done the I've done the onions because I have done I could, oh, that's, this was the practice with the big paintbrushes. This is when I bought these three paintbrushes. Um, they're synthetic. Um, there's a one, a three and a 3.0. Um, I don't know if that's going to, uh, if I click that on focus, I'll show you when I zoom back down again. Um, but um, I quite like working with this and I did a big area with that big paintbrush and that proved I could do it because I really panicked because I'm a bit of a tight, tight worker. Is that showing up okay? Um, so I've done those kind of string of, of onions. Um, but this is a, a, again a mixture of things. Um, the houses will be quite realistic and I love this page. I will photocopy this one because I probably want to do it in different, different, there's the wood which is obviously going to, the banister is going to be something. Um, and then there's a big expanse but if you have a shadow coming through then you can change the colour slightly and you can use a smaller brush. Um, again there's another page of books so that's going to be um, there's a Humpty Dumpty there and a boot and a fairy. And I've, I've actually coloured this page somewhere, I don't know where I've put it, as a practice. That's the practice I did for that page. Um, and this is the watercolours at the front. When I did this book I put traditional watercolours in it. Here. It must have got warm. So I took the pans, the colour out of the little watercolour pans, Winsor Newton, and I cut off a couple of millimetres and stuck them in my book. So I have a warm and a cold yellow, a warm and a cold red, and a warm and a cold blue. So I've got ultramarine and uh, cerulean blue. There is the sap greens in there. I decided to put them in there. Um, uh, Elysian crimson and a cadmium yellow. And that's a cadmium yellow pale, which is quite an orangey red. So I used that. And I started mixing colors here. Uh, the traditional way um, but I thought they were a bit too bright if I put automatic focus on oh thanks little P thank you oh hi Mitz26 welcome to Bunny's Designs if I just pop this on automatic focus and try and hold it up you can see where did I do the little man? And I, I didn't like the colours. I thought they were too bright. But that was, I wouldn't have known that if I'd have played. So that was a good experiment to photocopy a page. It's a young lady in the, in the mirror there. <laughs> You can't probably show on on um, so that was an experiment and I didn't like the colours really. So the other photocopy I did was this one. And I like these muted colours better. 
But of course, everybody can use whatever colours they want. It's not going through. Um, but I had a lot of fun, as I say. I just took, I just took the colours and worked through the pages. And that gave me some idea. I'm trying to watch the thing to make sure that I'm in focus when I'm talking. But I made a mistake, you see, I didn't like that blue, it was too, it was too blue. And I, and I made a mistake on that one as well, so. Although I like the colour, the, the tree obviously wants to come out of a tree-coloured book, but it didn't, so. Um, I think I'll focus on that one. So. Oh, sorry, dog alert. There might be a barking in a minute. So that was my practice. And I learned an awful lot from doing that photocopy. And I didn't ruin the book. If it's a book that you're not particularly bothered about, um, like some of the other ones, then I wouldn't. I don't do that. I just start colouring in and it's fine. But I'm, I I think this is... If I if I spent £10 on a book, the tight Yorkshire Lass, um, I do want it to be nice but what I did is this is quite old and I'm trying not to look at it I, did, I put it there to, for the focus because I don't want to know what colors he did and that's um, from my old laptop that my daughter uh, bought me years and years and years ago let me just get rid of that a second um, and so and here, I'm definitely trying not to look at that because I want to use my own colours. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dimothy. Um, and, but so some of these, I'd say I, I will photocopy. These I won't because by the time I've done six pages of the books, um, I'll have a pretty good idea of, um, and, and there's, a, there's a couple of jigsaws that, of the books, I don't miss that this focus when it focuses on that. Now you could use those colours. Obviously they're beautiful, aren't they? But I'm desperately trying to put my own colours. So um, I've had a bit of a go with that. And it's not it's not brilliant, but I wanted to test these three brushes that I bought at the model show and, and because it was three days and I couldn't go anywhere I just had to sit at the back of um, a stall with my foot in the air so I coloured in <laughs> I practiced and um, again this is books and that's quite a grey scale is that so they're different boxes as well is anybody else uh, colouring this book so I think it's a good idea to pick off sections and colour this and then think about the next section and how it affects it. I mean, I don't know if you, you could do bright colours and dull colours and all reds, all browns, all blues. There's another colour of just all books. Um, there's a Christmas tree there. It's not going to focus, is it? But there's all sorts. There's a little bird box there, a tiny little bird box. Um, so there's some big areas, and then there's some tiny areas. And it's a lovely book, but the pages are really thick. You're convinced there are two pages stuck together. So you know it probably would take quite quite well to to, to watercoloring in a traditional way, but. Um, And I've actually started on a first page, <laughs> which is uh, 
which is uh, quite nice. So I'll stop this video and then I'll start another one if that's okay. So thank you for uh, thank you for watching Bunny's Designs on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube with 